So it's pretty commonly known that when you get heavily intoxicated, you may not perform well, aka your PP will stay floppy despite your drunk mindset being attracted to the beast you took back to your apartment. So, you know, it's not a mental psychological thing. It's a metabolic physical thing. Very simple. The liver is overwhelmed with processing alcohol so that the required mechanism for sexual activities are not working mainly blood vessels. To simplify that even more, liver damage causes erectile dysfunction. Now, can we apply liver damage in general to impaired sexual performance? I think, generally speaking, when someone is in a very poor state of health, they will have little to no sex drive. But let's see if there is any literature to back that up. So the first study is prevalence of sexual dysfunction in males with alcohol dependence. 100 male subjects admitted to a de-addiction center. That's that's what the girls in New York City need, a de-addiction center. With a diagnosis of alcohol dependence syndrome and withdrawal symptoms were assessed for sexual dysfunction using a sexual dysfunction checklist. 72% had one or more sexual dysfunction, the most common being premature ejaculation, low sexual desire, and erectile dysfunction. The amount of alcohol consumed appeared to be the most significant predictor of developing sexual dysfunction. Then we have a meta-analysis of erectile dysfunction and alcohol consumption. A J-shaped relationship between alcohol consumption and risk of erectile dysfunction was observed. Alcohol should be taken in moderate quantities in order to obtain the dual effect of disinhibition and relaxation. If taken chronically, it could provoke vascular damage. The impact of abstinence from alcohol on erectile dysfunction. Of the 104 subjects studied, 89% showed improvement in erectile dysfunction after three months of abstinence from alcohol. So alcohol in small to moderate amounts acts as a vasodilator, it relaxes blood vessels, and it can actually be easier to perform, but in larger amounts, alcohol becomes a vasoconstrictor, constricts blood vessels, and that's where you have the performance issues. Sexual function and testosterone levels in men with non-alcoholic liver disease. Men with disease grades B and C have significant sexual dysfunction and significant reduction of both total and free testosterone levels. The main binding components of testosterone are produced in the liver. So it's not common knowledge, but very easy to understand metabolically that any sort of liver damage greatly reduces your body's ability to produce testosterone and we know that is a big factor in sex drive and performance. Next, erectile dysfunction in cirrhosis is impacted by liver dysfunction, diabetes, hypertension. About two-thirds of male patients with cirrhosis show erectile dysfunction, severity of liver dysfunction, portal hypertension, arterial hypertension, and diabetes were identified as risk factors for erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction in patients with liver disease related to cirrhosis, hepatitis B. The prevalence of any erectile dysfunction was 24.6% for all patients with chronic hepatitis B. Now these past three studies are non-alcoholic liver disease, have nothing to do with whiskey or alcohol consumption. So it's a very obvious and provable hypothesis that any degree of liver damage can cause sexual inhibition and I think that can be stretched to a lot of other health issues as well. If you're having many different problems in your life, it might be some type of liver damage. And don't worry, ladies, I didn't forget about you. Sexual behavior in women with non-alcoholic liver disease. Sexual desire was reduced by 33%. Difficulty in becoming sexually aroused was noted by 18%. Orgasm during intercourse was not experienced by 25%. And that's kind of crazy because if you add each of those up, it could hypothetically be 75% of the woman having some sort of sexual issue from liver damage. But the conclusion of that study is, oh, it's only about a quarter of them. It's fine. It, completely ridiculous. You know, these studies find some very interesting and important things that everyone should really know about. And then it's just brushed to the side. Obviously, not just a problem in men. It's across the board. If you have any sort of organ damage because of possible past poor diet, lifestyle, even EMF Wi-Fi radiation exposure, 
when you start having reduced sex drive, that's a pretty good indicator of something being wrong. And uh, again, as I've spoken about on my channel, there are so many components of health and when you put all the pieces together, you can figure things out. This is just another one of those components that you want to be aware of. Interestingly, I think this is mostly with modern alcohol consumption. If you have a properly fermented high quality beverage like dairy kefir, water kefir, those things might be alcoholic, but they have corresponding amounts of probiotics, B vitamins, and other nutrients that make it so that type of alcohol doesn't really damage your liver. But you know, when you're consuming basically pure ethanol, uh, a filtered alcohol, you know, think about why rich people always have wine cellars with all of this organic and biodynamic wine. You know, they're not drinking tequila off the shelf from a dive bar. Definitely something to think about. So uh, you shouldn't really demonize alcohol necessarily, but once you understand the context of different qualities of alcohol and how they're prepared, then you can try to theorize why certain people are having certain issues. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, you guys can go to frank where you can support me through all of my businesses, Frankie's Syringe Meat, Frankie's Syringe Foods, we have the water kefir, a whole bunch of stuff on there and interesting products for you guys to check out. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you guys for tomorrow.